talking about money, talking about the distribution of wealth, it's not something we want to hear in church. It's when we accuse pastors of talking about politics. And yet the Bible talks about poverty. It talks about being poor. And it talks about wealth quite a bit. On our journey through the book of James, we're still in chapter 1, but we're on verses 9 through 11. And in these verses, James talks about poverty and riches. Let the believer who is lowly boast in being raised up, and the rich in being brought low, because the rich will disappear like a flower in the field, for the sun rises with its scorching heat and withers the field. Its flowers fall, and its beauty perishes. It is the same with the rich. In the midst of a busy life, they will wither away. What we understand from how God has inspired scripture is that God is on the side of those with the least, those who don't have wealth, those who have been left out of whatever economic system they are in. God is on the size, side of those who are lowly. God seeks for the poor, the least, the lowly, to be raised up. And for the wealthy, the rich, those who have more than their share in the economic system, to be brought low. God, God is on the side of the poor which is something that we often have to struggle with. How do we use the wealth that we have been given? Struggling with the conditions of poverty and wealth is something that the Bible asks us to do. To struggle with what it means to have wealth I mean, can we hear Jesus' pain when he sees someone who has faith? But there's one thing that's holding him back from fully embracing what it means to live in the kingdom. And Jesus tells him if he wants to live in the kingdom, he has to give up his wealth, give it away. And it's a bridge too far for that, that man. He doesn't want to let go of the wealth that he has. So how do we think about wealth and poverty in our lives, but in our communal life, in the way we distribute wealth in our nation? Hey, the Bible is is really pretty clear on the issue of how we are to treat the poor. And is also clear about saying that the wealth, that money, that the power that comes with wealth and money is one of the things that pulls us farthest away from God. So today, as we stop and sit and pray, I invite you to take a deep breath, to close your eyes, to rest, to rest in the quiet of God, to let God speak to you in the stillness.
Holy One, we want you to be with us today as we think about money, as we think about wealth and riches, as we think about poverty. And so God, we lift up to you those places that are hurting right now. We think of Syria and Turkey, where there's such incredible destruction. And now that earthquake, killing untold people and bringing all sorts of structural damage. God, we ask you to be with those who are cleaning up, those who are digging out, those who are frightened and worried about where they will sleep, will they be safe tonight? We ask you to surround Syria and Turkey, all those places impacted by the devastating earthquake. And we ask you to be with those African nations that are facing such extreme poverty right now, that we have enough food and enough wealth in the world to feed everyone, and yet we are letting them starve. So God, we ask you to open up the hearts, the hearts and the bank accounts and the will of those who can truly make a difference to those facing poverty. When we think about here closer to home, about all the unhoused, the unhoused because our system has been set up in such a way that we can work a full-time job and not be able to afford a roof over our heads. Be with those who are unhoused. And be with the policy makers, the government officials that could can change the conditions under which we live, that could change the lives of people. And God, while we are here praying with you, we ask you to be with those in our lives who we know need your presence, who are facing an illness, who are struggling with issues in life. Please surround them with your love and your care. Protect and comfort. We ask this all in the name of your Son. Amen.